Hi everyone. Uh, well, you probably know I'm Brian Weiser, and this is a presentation on Firefly and Serenity. And uh, can I just have a show of hands? Who has seen Firefly or Serenity? Wow, the majority. This is awesome. Okay. Well, I won't. I won't need to give you too much uh, of an introduction to what they are. But for those who don't know, Firefly is a sci-fi western. Uh, came out in 2002. Uh, novelist Orson Scott Card called it the, gra the greatest science fiction series ever created. Uh, he actually said it in my documentary, too. Uh, that is the ship Serenity. The, the TV series ran uh, like 12 episodes, was, yeah, was canceled, and it was picked up a few years later from Universal Pictures uh, as Serenity. Uh, Serenity is the name of the spaceship. Firefly is the class of the spaceship, if you're curious why. That's the crew. Uh, all of these actors are major actors. They've been in everything. You've got Adam Baldwin, who's most recently in Chuck. Jewel State, she's been in Stargate. Alan Tudyk has been in iRobot and uh, Knight's Tale. Gina Torres, she's been in a lot of stuff. Uh, Nathan Fillion, you've probably seen him on Castle. Um, uh, Sean Marr, uh, he was in uh, the Playboy Club, and I'm trying to remember what else he's been in recently, and of course Summer Glau, who was also in uh, the Sarah Connor Chronicles, and uh, a lot of other cool stuff. Um, I was actually on set when they shot that picture. Uh, that's the, the poster for the movie Serenity. And so... Um, I was a background extra in Serenity, and how did I become a background extra? Well, uh, they wanted to have a few fans in the show, because they knew the, the fans really helped uh, with uh, just their you know, underground movement to have Serenity come to life. I mean, they were so passionate for a couple of years promoting Firefly any way they could, trying to get Serenity to come out. And the fans played a major part in the film being released, so they wanted to have some fans in it, uh, but they didn't make it easy to find out who to contact. Uh, I was able to uh, you know, uh, follow the breadcrumbs, find out who to contact, and they said, you're a fan? Oh, great, great. Uh, and you live in California, right? Uh-huh, yep, I live in California. No, I don't live in California, but I wasn't going to tell them that, because uh, I, want, I wanted to be part of it. And then uh, I booked a last-minute flight the next day, uh, went down for a costume fitting, and then I flew back a week later for a 12-hour shoot. Um, and uh, you'll see a few lines down there, Serenity TV show, stage 12. This is uh, at the Universal lot. And that's what stage 12 looks like. <laughs> and... Uh, these are the trucks where uh, we got dressed, and stage 12 is just right over there on the left. And these are some of the fans who were on set that day. These were the only people that weren't in SAG. So here I am, and my buddy Jeremy, and some other people. And um, we got there about 6 in the morning, and there was a lot of waiting around. Um, but part of the waiting around was really kind of cool. We got to have lunch in the same area where the cast was having lunch. So uh, this is me in my costume with uh, Summer Glau in the costume she uh, wears when she kicks butt, when she kicks butt uh, in the Maidenhead bar. So uh, that's one of my favorite pictures of all time, um, <laughs> as you might imagine. Um, Actually, when I, when I got to uh, hang out with Nathan once, we were showing each other photos, and uh, I came to this picture and said, yeah, I tell everyone she's my girlfriend. And he looked at me like he was going to kill me. He said, no, I'm just kidding. I, I really <laughs> anyway, she's, uh, she's very pretty, very good actress. But um, um, the cool thing about this particular uh, shoot day was uh, we were filming on Beaumont, where Serenity lands, so the full Serenity ship was there. The f uh, and it's a different one from the one they used in the series. That one was torn down. Um, 
and uh, walked into stage 12, and there's the full-size serenity in all our glory. And um, the, um, I don't know if you remember the, uh, well, let me, I can describe this better when I get a few more pictures in. Um, this, uh, I'll, I'll get back to that in a second. This is uh, on stage 12. This is off camera. This is a tunnel they were, were going to film in, which is why it's fully decorated. Uh, it's actually a brothel, supposed to be. And uh, we weren't supposed to have a camera on set, so we did not take this picture. Uh, but, uh, okay, so this is the scene I'm in, and I can better uh, describe what I was talking about. So after, um, after everybody gets off the ship on Beaumont, and uh, Kaylee's talking to Simon, she gives him some advice, and then she's really teary-eyed, and she walks into the crowd. So that's Kaylee Jewel State. She's right, walking right toward me, right there. That's my little silver Nike shoe. And I got a whole two seconds of screen time, which is actually pretty lucky. Um, now, um, I'm walking, you can't really see it too well from this photo. I'm walking out of a tunnel, um, the, the tunnel you just saw a couple photos back. Uh, this is the back end of the tunnel. And uh, the lady that placed the fans on the set, she knew we were fans. And she put me and uh, a couple other fans in this tunnel. And we couldn't see what was going on for most, for most of the shoot. And we were a little frustrated. You know, they, they know we're fans. We've spent all this money to come out. And we're not even on the stage. And uh, we can't even see what's going on. But she really did care because she knew that the exit to this tunnel was the focal point for the camera. So I got really, really lucky because of a really nice casting director that I actually showed up on screen. And um, sorry if this is taking a little long for this part, but uh, it, was, it was kind of funny because I went to some of the pre-screenings and I saw myself for the first time, wow, I made it for four seconds. And then I saw another pre-screening, and then it was three seconds, and then I saw another pre-screening, and it was down to two, and I figured, well, they're going to just cut me out of the film pretty soon. Uh, and I, I don't know if it's because I had a big smile on my face, um, which I did. I, I naturally smile. Um, actually, when I first got onto set that day, I saw Jewel State walking out of her trailer for the first time, and she saw me, and she gave me this big smile, and so naturally I smiled back. And I was just so happy to be there. I was, I had a huge smile on this scene, and I, I don't think they wanted anybody quite that happy. So I'm, I'm, my theory is that's why they were trying to shorten my, my scene as much as possible. I have a question. Yeah. Shouldn't you be smiling if you're just coming out of a brawl? Well, <laughs> I guess that's true. I mean, I, I must be a very satisfied customer. So, <laughs> yeah, and this is actually uh, one of the girls. She's holding some of the serenity bills there and being propositioned. So... Um, and there was actually, um, so it was a 12 hour shoot, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, there was one thing I remember, uh, they filmed that never showed up. There was, uh, uh, I'm trying to remember, it was like a, a woman, she was kind of like a, a spider woman. She was like really high up in the air and she had these giant legs. I don't know what in the world she was supposed to be, but she definitely didn't look human. Um or completely human, uh, so that, that definitely didn't make the cut. Uh, after the shoot, a few of us uh, got a tour of the ship, and um, so I, uh, my buddy and I were lucky enough to get pictures on the bridge. We broke away from the main group, and it's like, wait, the bridge is back there. Come on. So we kind of snuck away from the group, and um, yeah, that's my other favorite photo of all time, the bridge. And that's what the medical bay looks like. And these are just some other random scenes around Beaumont. Um, yeah, this is the tunnel I was talking about. Yeah, these were all taken very quickly. We only had maybe 10 minutes on the ship, so we were just running around thrilled to death and yeah, that's the, uh, the entrance to the tunnel. Obviously, Serenity. 
and by the way, we didn't take any of these pictures either. Um, that's looking back into the, the engine room. It, the, the amount of detail was really amazing. I've actually got uh, a lot of other photos that I didn't happen to have with me for this trip. But it was really incredible just to be able to walk on the ship that we all dreamed about and saw on the TV series. Yeah, good old Kaylee's quarters. Kitchen. Yeah, the common area you see in a lot of the episodes. And the casts, now they're huge fans. They're, they, they recognize how much the Brown Coats helped Serenity uh, to come out. And so some people who weren't extras on the set but knew it was getting filmed flew down and came up to the fence and some of the cast came out and met with them. So just to show their appreciation. And uh, just trying to remember if there's, does anyone have any questions about anything I've said so far? Or about, yes? Um, did you get paid? Oh yeah, uh, good question. Almost. Um, <laughs> I got paid 70 something dollars. Uh, for the 12 hours, I probably spent about $1,500 for flights and hotels, but it was totally worth it. Uh, and for that $70, I did have to file taxes for California because I owed them about 25 cents. <laughs> did, I have a question. did you have to join the Screen Actors? Uh, no, no, I didn't. I didn't have a speaking part, and I wasn't required okay. to join. Yes. In the ship, the, the actual rooms were they actually there? Yes. Because it. When you look at the movie and you look at the outside of the ship, it doesn't look like those rooms could actually fit in there. Well, the, the set was huge. Um, just going back. Um, now, this part with the bridge, the bridge in the engine room, that was one. about the personal rooms out the hallway. Right, right, right. Um, but the, uh, the, the bridge and the engine room were actually one set, and then the cargo bay that you see in all the episodes, that was actually a separate set. So it wasn't the full ship as you would envision it. It was two separate pieces, but each of those pieces was complete. You could walk from room to room. Um, you know, the their individual bedrooms were complete uh, and so forth. Does that answer your question? Okay. Um, now I know I'm forgetting a lot of details on this. Um, it was just... Uh, Unbelievable. So was it just the one day? That just one day, yeah. Um, How many minutes of filming would you say they did that actually showed up? That yes, time? that's that's an excellent point. Um, for the 12 hour shoots, you might have seen 30 seconds to a minute at most on film. Wow. That's brutal. Okay. It was. But it, it was really cool, you know, just to see Joss, Joss in action and see the whole cast. And the photo I showed you at the, at the beginning, it was just cool because we were all standing there watching when, yeah, when that photo was taken. So it's a little surreal to actually see it. And I was really impressed, too, because at, at the very end of this, uh, I, I was actually one of the very last to leave the stage. And I, I just wanted to linger as much as possible. I didn't want to leave because... <laughs> no, no, but, you know, I, I try to be subtle but courteous. So I went up to uh, one, of the, one, of the main, uh, one of the main people there and said, you know, I was here all day and I didn't really get to see the ship up close because I was in the tunnel. Would you mind if I just looked around a little bit? And she said, sure, sure, just, you know, be careful. I said, well, no, I, I'll be very respectful. She said, no, be careful, you know, don't fall into anything. And so... So I actually wandered around a little bit uh, and was late to get back to the, uh, the trailer. And then at that point, they actually brought uh, a group of us over for the tour. So I actually got two tours, my own and then, <laughs> then the one with the other, the other group. Um, and uh, I hope some people ask some questions because I know I'm, 
I'm forgetting a lot of details from that day, but it was just, it totally changed my life to actually see the, the ship uh, in person. And it inspired uh, my buddy and I so much that um, we wanted to tell the story of the fans and the critical role they played in the cancelled series Firefly Becoming Serenity. And we talked to the people that were going to make the Serenity uh, DVD, and they were going to include maybe five minutes on the fans, if that. And so we decided, you know, if we don't tell this story, no one else will. So we decided to make this film, Done the Impossible, The Fan's Tale of Firefly and Serenity. Uh, it's hosted by Adam Baldwin. Yay. And features interviews with Joss and Nathan and Alan, Jewel and Morena, Christina Hendricks, you know, from Mad Men, and uh, Ron, everyone but Summer and Gina, who it just, just didn't work out with their schedules, and fans from around the country. And we interviewed everyone as fans, and so a lot of the questions you might have, like, well, why did Joss kill Wash? Why did, you know, a lot of those questions are answered in the film. Um, it's got a ton of special features. You could actually do a full search for any, any phrase or word, and it'll show you. You can click and go to any scene based on the, the text you've entered. So it's actually one of the most complex DVDs ever released. Um, there's a cool interactive timeline that Jewel State does voiceover on uh, through the whole history of all the little events from Firefly leading up to Serenity. And, uh, yeah, before we get into the, uh, the, the comedic pictures, um, Done the Impossible was shown in seven film festivals around the world. It's got a full soundtrack done by professional musicians who happen to be Firefly fans, uh, Celtic and Filk music. Um, and uh, this was uh, at DragonCon in Atlanta. Uh, decided, well, hey, I'll get Nathan to pose with me. And sure enough, uh, he sa I said, can it look like we're having a tussle? And he said, sure. So I uh, was able to take this photo. It's not because he hated my movie. Uh, it actually hadn't been made yet when this was taken. <clears throat> but I did get a chance to hang out with him at a private party, and he told me he actually liked it. This was a few years after, and that was totally surreal. I was just hanging out with him for 20 or 25 minutes. Uh, uh, this is at Zoic Studios. They did the special effects for Firefly and Serenity, and that's one of the models they used for the design of the ship in Los Angeles. And had so much fun doing Done the Impossible, we decided to do a cruise, the one and only brown coat cruise. Um, took about 200 fans to Cabo San Lucas and brought on uh, Michael Fairman, who played Niska, you know, the guy that cuts off Mal's ear, the guy in the space station in the Firefly series. <clears throat> and uh, when I first met him, he says, you know, people think I'm this terrible person, but I'm really a nice guy. And he is, as you can tell from the picture, he's a real, he's a real gem. And uh, Ron Glass came on board too. And, uh, <clears throat> and I have to tell you, and I always preface it when I, when I say this, but... Uh, I, I'm completely straight. They hold weddings here, and I have a romantic photo with Ron Glass. And I am very proud of that. I really love Ron, and I'm completely straight. <laughs> just, just so we're clear on that. But it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful location. And I uh, also brought on um, Jonathan Woodward, the dead guy from The Message, and Nectar Rose, who was the love bot in Serenity. And the Bedlam Bards, they're a fantastic um, filk group uh, that are on the soundtrack. They did The Ballad of Joss, which is a parody on The Ballad of Jane. It's really fun music. You can tell they're kind of wild, wild guys. And, um, oh, must be a photo. Did I forget? Did I? Oh, I must have forgotten that photo. Uh, also brought on Sunny Rhodes. Uh, he did the theme song for it. He sung the theme song for Firefly that Joss wrote, and um, with a lot of these people, they'd never been to, a, like Sunny Rhodes and Michael Fairman had never been at a Firefly event before. 
Uh, I just threw this photo in. I don't know if you recognize the Kaylee maquette that uh, came out. It's a little, little action figure. And I did um, all the negotiations and um, legal stuff to get that to come out. So that's kind of a special photo for me. Um, I was involved with another film called Brown Coats Redemption uh, that was a fan film for charity. And uh, my role was uh, getting some of the VIPs involved for cameo appearances. Uh, now these are some of the fans behind the scenes. But there's Sonny Rhodes. Um, and he told me it was his dream to be in a movie. And so I got him in Brown Coats Redemption. And this is right after his scene was shot. And he just couldn't believe he was actually in a movie. He'd always dreamed of being in a movie. He's a really, really generous man. He's, he's won a lot of awards for his blues music. Uh, if you like blues, he's awesome. You should, you should check out his music. And then my other favorite photo, he's, he's a sweet guy. And um, I also had a brief uh, acting bit in Brown Coats Redemption, so that's my GQ pose in my brown coat and a fake laser pistol. Sadly, they were out of real laser pistols. So. <laughs> um, and that's it for my slideshow. Um, that was the uh, highly abbreviated version of the presentation because I know we've got a lot of other things going on. Are there any questions? Anything I glossed over? Yes? When you thought about trying to become an expert, when is it you realize that you're really going to go through it and fly all the way back to California? I mean, at some point you think, I'm really going to do this. And did it surprise you that you actually, you know, lots of people think about stuff like that. Well, you did it. It was, well, first of all, it was totally surrealistic. I mean, I couldn't believe it was actually happening. Like, it wasn't happening to me, but it was. That's why I said when I walked out, you know, at like 6 a.m., and there's Jewel State, who I've never seen before, and she comes out of her trailer, and she gives me this big smile. It's like, what a wonderful welcome from somebody I'm, I'm worshiping on TV. And uh, she, she's, a, she's a great person beyond, beyond her uh, great acting, but um, it just felt like I had gone home. Now, I, I don't know, for those of you who haven't seen Firefly, and for those of us who are huge fans, it affects a lot of us on a very deep emotional, personal level because you know, everyone can find one of the casts that they connect with in a lot of ways. And um, fire, I actually told uh, Joss when I saw him, uh, saw him at Comic-Con, I told him, you know, you really changed my life. If it hadn't been for Firefly, you know, I wouldn't have been an extra in the movie. I wouldn't have gone on to do all these different things. And he said, no, you changed your life. And yeah, that's true, but I wouldn't have done all of these things if I hadn't been so influenced by this, by this great, uh, great series and movie. Um, Did they have anything like sequel plans? Or? Yes, thank you. Thank you for that. So uh, that was one of the things uh, I wanted to mention was what, what does the future hold? We've had Firefly, we've had Serenity. What else? Uh, Dark Horse, as you may know, Dark Horse Comics, they've released several uh, Serenity comics. Uh, there's Better Days, uh, most recently The Shepherd's Tale, um, and so some, some of the stories are explored that way. And at Comic-Con uh, that I just came from uh, earlier this week, uh, Joss said in the 10-year Firefly anniversary panel that they'll continue to explore more stories in the form of comics because right now that's the best avenue. Um, he did joke about rebooting the series and making some reference joke uh, and make some references to you know doing younger characters when they were kids and some other things. It was a complete joke. Yeah. If you were there, you knew it was a joke. But some of the online blogs got carried away. Got carried away. They probably wanted some clicks through traffic to make money or something. I don't know. But right now, we can look forward to more comics. Uh, and, I mean, Joss, especially having released Avengers and Cabin in the Woods, he certainly has even more power to do what he wants to do in Hollywood right now. But the cast, I mean, they're all heavily involved in their own careers, and trying to get everyone together, I think, would be very challenging. But certainly, 
if it could happen, every, every one of them would drop whatever they were doing to be a part of it. Um, I, I will tell you, uh, with uh, The Shepherd's Tale, that was uh, just another cool moment for me. Um, so when I brought Ron Glass on my cruise, he told uh, Joss, he said, Joss, uh, I'm going to be trapped on, a, I mean, I'm going to be on a boat with fans for five days. <laughs> and they're always asking me, what's Book's backstory? What's Book's backstory? And I need something else to tell them. And in that moment, Joss agreed to write The Shepherd's Tale. And then for the very first time, for each day of the cruise, Ron uh, revealed a secret of Book's past. Um, and I'm... Of course, it, it's in it's in the comic that's now released. Uh, but, uh, let's see if I can remember some um, some part of him is artificial, and it's not his hair. Um, he took his name from someone he killed, and I forget the others. But um, it was just kind of exciting because I pushed a pebble in the universe and made something happen. Um, <laughs> But uh, it's, it's totally affected my life, and the only other thing that's affected my life this much has been the Apple II community. Yes, Ken? Two questions. One, which character do you identify with? Wash. Why? I like Hawaiian shirts. I have a lot of them. Um, I always try to be a comedian, and Wash is certainly tries to be a com comedian. And... Um, Honestly, uh, I, I also kind of know what it's like to have something jabbed through, jabbed through me like happened to him in Serenity. I'm not, not, not exactly literally, but so I, I connect with him in some, some different ways. Is Wash up there? Which one is Wash? Uh, Alan Tudyk. Okay. Um, yeah, the third, third guy from the left. Third from the left. One more in shirt. Yeah. Not everybody's in that photo. Where's Book? He wasn't on set that day. And so is And Morena wasn't on yeah. set that day. Okay. My other question for you is, this is a really good sci-fi show. Yeah. <coughs> but some people would think that 13 episodes isn't that much to inspire the sort of fanaticism that it has. True. And they might not even think that... It, was that good a show in such a short time? Maybe if it had run longer. So what is it about Firefly? That's my question. I think a lot of people that might pose that question have never seen Firefly. But there are and people who have seen that show sure. and still have that question. Sure. Um, it's a western. It's a space adventure. What else do you need? I mean, exactly. I mean, you've got you know spaceships and... Horses and it's like Blade Runner meets the Old West. Well, and I've never seen that. So, can I, so let me ask you two questions. Sure. I agree, but not everybody does. So and I, I, I'll, I'll still finish answering yours, but what's, so I've what's, never seen it. And sure. I recognize that it has a following. I had a, a good friend who was really liked it. I just never had an opportunity to see it with him or go see the movie. But um, yeah, so explain to me what you like about the characters and then about the story. It's, it's more rich and it's more gritty than other things I've seen on TV. For example, uh, when you see the spaceship flying through the atmosphere, it's not a steady, smooth, perfect shot like you might see in Star Trek, which I also enjoy. It's actually bouncing around and moving, and it's maybe not framed in the center. It's, it's off-center, which other shows might think is a mistake, but they do that intentionally. It just seems more real, so you feel like you're there more the way it's filmed. Uh, a lot of directors go out of their way to avoid lens flares. Joss loves them. He actually got special lenses so he could get you know, lens flares in certain situations. Um, so things might be a little grainier, off-center, so the way it's filmed and the fact that the cast is so fantastic and the quality of the writing uh, is equally fantastic. Uh, I don't get passionate about too many things. I wouldn't have made a documentary, you know, another film and a cruise if I wasn't just totally blown away by this. And um, I, cer I certainly didn't do that for Star Trek, and I love Star Trek, classic and next generation. Um, you know, I've loved other series, 
but there was just something about, and it wasn't just having been a background extra, although that was certainly a catalyst, but if you watch it, you, m you might understand a little bit more. And not, not, ev not everybody connects with it, but most people really seem to. I can connect with the, the passion. And that might make why the, there's so much strong about it, because it only had those 13 episodes. So well, it and it, it's, 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 not, it's not that there were thir only 13, but it's just it the story it. and the characters and the, the emotion, whether it's drama or humor. It doesn't even take 13 episodes. I watched it when it aired, and I caught one episode, and I was immediately on the phone with a friend of mine saying, did you see this show? You've got to check out this show. I can't wait to see the next episode and see what's happening. Right? It was like one episode, and I was hooked. And, th and that was actually an interesting, uh, that was actually an interesting thing. Um, Firefly was given birth, and then certain individuals did everything in their power to help it extinguish, which is why the night it was supposed to air kept changing. It was preempted by the Brady Bunch. Uh, it was aired out of order. So if you really wanted to see it, you had a hard time. I was only able to see two episodes <coughs> when it was on TV. I had to watch the whole thing on DVD. Oh, I watched it start to finish. You're and, lucky. And then I, you know, when they came out with the, the last show they aired was the, actually the pilot episode. Then you're like, wait a minute. I, it confused me because I didn't know what they were doing. And also it's like, yeah, we already know all these people. And they're, why are they introducing? And then I realized what they were doing. And that's when I found out they had canceled the show. And it, 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 was, it was hard because what they would do is midway through after like five episodes or something they would preempt it not and not show it for like three weeks because of whatever they, that's how you get a show canceled you know when you break up its routine so it's not there every week and you don't depend on it you know it's not then you stop looking for it and the sad thing is that from what i understand the sad thing is that that was intentional very intentional yeah why Somebody pissed somebody else off, so they didn't want their show to... Politics. Yeah, yeah it's politics. So it's exactly. I, I could mention the name, but I won't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes? I've been wondering about the facts of this case, because I never watched it, so I have no opinion. But sometimes, not running on forever, limiting the number of episodes has to do with a critical judgment that... The whatever the series is, like Monty Python had a limited number of programs for uh, faulty towers. You know, they had very few programs for, I mean, people find that difficult to believe, but there was a decision that they had said that they had to say, or that they had, or that they had uh, exhausted the possibilities of a formula they were using. <laughs> I understand what you're saying, but it had nothing to do with the, the, the lack of viewership or the fans. It was just, like like you said, you know, grudges and politics and things like that. It's not lack of viewership or fans. I mean, like, Python had plenty of fans and viewership. It's just they felt they had exhausted the possibility of a formula. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like the Stephen King book that had yeah, not 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 in the, not in this case. Okay. Yes. I just wanted to say that uh, I didn't uh, make some fans there. I bought my firefly uh, and Trinity just to my youngest daughter there, and two months later my first grandchild named Ripper. So. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Yes, Ken. I've seen. I belong to enough Facebook groups about this show that I know that there are still people hoping it'll be resurrected. Maybe they can buy the rights to the show and give it to Nathan Fillion or whatever. The show started 10 years ago, which is kind of a long time. And granted, Star Trek almost had its phase two in the late 70s, but even that didn't work out. What is the motivation to continue trying to bring this show back when the farther we get from its premiere, the less likely it is? And how likely is it that it'll come back? At this point, I don't know that anyone is trying to have it come back. Uh, what you just mentioned uh, what happened a year or two ago where some misguided fans wanted to try to raise money to give to help bring the show back. And um, Joss and the cast didn't want that to happen. It, and 
and it, it eventually was stopped, which is good because it was the wrong direction to go. Um, and so, yeah, the, the fans were just passionate about it. I'm sure they had you know, good intentions, but it, it wasn't a good idea, and the, and the cast didn't think so, from what I understand. Um, at this point, no one is trying to raise money to bring it back. It doesn't need money to bring it back. It needs Joss deciding that I'm going to do something else with it and then coordinating schedules and so forth, and he's the only one that can do it. Uh, Comic-Con that I just came from, like I said, had the 10-year Firefly anniversary panel, and with the exception of Twilight, and, well, Twilight is Twilight, um, it was the most looked forward to panel at the entire convention. More people were talking about that than anything else, just to see them reunited on stage. And Nathan, who usually does a great job of being you know, cocky, funny, and joking around a lot, and he was, but you could tell he was very serious and emotional, and a few times it looked like he was on the verge of tears, as was Joss because this was all hugely important to them. This was really, I mean, they've gone on to do great things and they'll continue to do great things, but they've all said this series was so special to them that none of them, and I don't think any of the fans, think they'll ever do anything as good as this that was as special as this. Just with the quality of the people and the writing and the story, they were all personally invested in it. It wasn't just a job for them, and that shows up on screen. And a lot of series you see, I don't think you can, they, I don't think all the cast legitimately can say that or feel that. And I've talked to enough of them that I, I, I believe what they say in that regard, that it did personally matter to them in, in a huge way. So did, did that answer your question? Yes. I've already forgotten the question, but. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? I'm sure I could keep talking. <laughs> Thank you.